Welcome back, everyone. Going into the second half here of episode 142 of Court of Swords. Adam, what's going on? So the, as promised, the, the, they call it a storeroom, but really it's just like us. One of the, like everything else in here, it's a repurposed stone box that they happen to be keeping weapons in weapons and armor. So any, really any mundane rather than like tell you there's like 40 swords and 12 bows and whatever, really any mundane weapon or armor that you might need, you can grab there. Um, obviously Berg, this is a room full of inferior weaponry, right? You're not going to get to replace your hammer, but you could get a hammer if you wanted to, there's or not, like a great sword or whatever. Like one so. really good one. <laughs> like in the corner, the back corner, everybody forgot about it. <laughs> I mean, all right, here, let me, I'll give you, I'll give you a one in a hundred chance. That there's a magic weapon in here that nobody knew about. Yeah. That's just been waiting for you. So that you secretly find Excalibur chance. hiding down here amongst the other weapons. You got one, you have a one percent chance. So roll, 100. roll a d one hundred, and if you can get, if you can get a one hundred, then I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. Damn it! Well, there was a one in Almost. that number, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm Divine cool intervention, but you're level one. I rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, Mari. Both your arms fall off. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so no, you, I mean, I think I love the idea of Berg looking around and be like magic, no magic, no, just looking at every single weapon in here, trying to find a cool one, but no, they're all, I mean, they're well crafted, um, but they're not, in the back, yeah, just none of them dodging, are dodging like Jesus yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> after about like five or six thrown our ways, Berg, none of them are magical. A woot said that just. Grab an axe and let's go. You need a weapon of some sort. We'll work on finding a good one. Avengers. Yeah, what kind of what kind of weapon you want here, Berg? Maybe the roof. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I mean, whatever. What should it? I don't know. A hammer. So if you want, <laughs> if you want just like pure pure damage, you probably want like a. Do you have a sword? Or uh, sorry, not a sword. Do you um, have a, a shield? I, I mean, do you I want do, a shield because there there's shields it. laying around, but. Yeah, I do, but I it depends I, on if you want to use it to hand it. Used it because of uh, my AC, but I have seventeen AC now without a shield, so it's not really. You could have nineteen though with a shield. True. Well, if I'm using a sword, I might as well. You know what I mean? If it's not like a two-handed, you know, because the reason I was using it before was one I had better AC without the not better AC. I had better attack with the two-handed. Um, yeah, attacks with the the. I think, I guess would be yeah, true I think anyways, but, and J JP, I think you're probably best qualified to assist on this one. I yeah. think a great sword is the highest like base damage for a two handed weapon or yeah. Great. A great sword is 2d six. Six. Yeah. Yeah. You, I, I think if you get a bastard sword, you can one hand mm -hmm. it for D8 or dual wield it for 2d six. Well, here's my question me, too. That yeah, is like, see. does Berg's you found strength play into this at all where he might be able to wheel one hand wield like a, a two handed or is there no, it, we just go by the, no, I think I, I actually think that there is a specific, there's like a specific ability that lets you do that. Like, I think, I think you have to have a feat to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you go um, great X, you, it's a D 12. So you'd have the highest chance of like rolling. 2D six is 2D six is better than a D 12, right? Because you have one, the, the, well, curve is right. different yeah statistically 2d6 is is better than 1d12 but there's there's something that bar barbarians have where they hit for max damage or something like that i, I don't know for some um, reason i know that no, d12s are the, better for a barbarian yes so this yeah for a barbarian the thing about the d12 is you can use your get an extra die thing which means you'll roll you'll get an extra d12 instead of one extra d6 yeah yeah i throw another damage die so in that so it's better for be that better. ability uh if you're but, if you're using that yeah yeah because of yeah and and then like yeah brutal crit modifies it as well it depends on if you want to have more because when you crit it doubles the dice so 46 is better than 2d12 right so again because it's moving the average up um yeah i mean at this point the damage because you're such high level it's your abilities doing most of the stuff this is just giving you a base to work off of so yeah. do you want do you when you think of berg is it cooler if berg has a big axe or a big sword I mean, do you, kind of, what do you think? You know what I'm saying? You already know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> the 
facts, Adam. Obviously, fair. fair. <laughs> Somebody in chat pointed out you could you could you could theoretically have two swords, but I I think a two hander with one big one big two guy is, is probably better. <laughs> yeah, they'd be smaller swords though. Unfortunately, yeah, it wouldn't look as cool. <clears throat> okay, so let me let me let me throw you a great axe. Let's check it in your character sheet for you. As you're as you're like picking up weapons and seeing which ones like weighted or whatever, I'm sure swinging around just Berg, you, you can throw boulders. Let's not forget that. that. <laughs> oh, I mm-hmm. haven't forgotten. Okay, just I will throw boulders when should, I need to. Should be the main course of action. Is the boulder throwing? It's very it hurts. Yeah, not always. It's just hard to carry boulders. around boulders, right? <laughs> mm. Awkward to carry with. Yeah. Yeah, so the great X, the great X that you find, um, it's probably not being used because it's much too big for anyone that you've seen. Like, no, nobody here uh, is the kind of warrior that would they would be able to fight with an axe this big. Like, they'd they'd fuck it up, right? So, uh, it's been left here. It's a little dusty, but when you when you wipe it off, you can see it's like it's very finely made. Um, it has a uh, a slightly curved um handle made out of metal wrapped in some kind of dark red leather. The blade is it's got um uh a, I guess it's a great axe, so it's got a big cutting surface on both sides, the two headed axe. And they're made mm. it's made out of a very dark iron with a slight when you hold it in the light, it has a slight reddish like sheen when you when you like tip it and look at it in the light. So it's like finely crafted, but it's too big for too big for any any of the warriors around yeah. here to uh to wield. And I blow off some dust and it says Emperor Phase, great axe. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it says on it Emperor Phase side piece. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Emperor yeah. Phase discarded axe. So yeah, actually, there is a magic Action. item. Let me just, just, just to put this out there, there is a magic weapon in here. Currently, it belongs to Doug, but there's the holy. You cleaver. might want to. You could you could potentially try to convince Doug to give up the holy cleaver. <laughs> yeah, but I mean it's a magic <laughs> item, but really how don't you dare? Is it? Don't a, you a, dare take cleaver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I mean we talked about it's, a, it's, there and made it holy. it's an enchanted it's an enchanted hand axe, basically, but yeah. So maybe maybe not for you. It'd be too small, but <laughs> Berg's just he just needs another hit of that magic weapon. I don't care how small it is. Just... <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, All right. I'll so you have you have a great axe. Did anybody that. else? Maharib, you don't you don't you have no need for such paltry instruments. Nope. So you're good. I uh, think okay. maybe while we're in there, I just ten pillars. Do you need a weapon? I don't do you use? Yeah, no, you, you can, can you can see I, I have a I have a crossbow that I carry around. You need a dagger or a short sword, any I got it. I got I have my own weapons. All right, very well. Uh I need to drop this key off and then we can go f- see what Ramus has gotten himself into. So you don't need one anymore. Is that right, Mahari? <laughs> no, not at all. I'll be fine. Very well. And Berg, keep your chin up. I think those pieces might be useful Why in the future. Would my chin be up? Look on the bright side. Does that? Mm. Okay. Yes. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Somebody I love the idea of you, you saying don't see. <laughs> Yeah, I love the idea of you saying look on the bright side and he just turns the axe over like they're the same <laughs> color. I don't What do you what do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. All right. So you got you got you got your armament. You're ready to ready to go. Yep. Um I'm dropping the key off and then we'll, we'll be on our way. Yeah, okay. So you drop the key off. Is there anything else that you want to do here? Before you go meet up with Ramus again? I don't think so. We didn't really get access for the dwarves and the troll to stay here, but. Or the giant, whatever. The, mm-hmm. 
I don't think that's something that's going to be granted. I don't really want to go talk to <clears throat> Vani and yeah. them again. So, what if we just bring him in? Man, you got to. Okay. We're just going to fight for the next hour and 30. <laughs> 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 I mean, I don't what think if I were to roll initiative? <laughs> Berg's got a weapon. He's got to use it now. Jeez. He just wants to get into fight immediately. Uh, mm-hmm. No, I, I think Break if anything, in. we'll just have him come with us. It's not the worst. Mm. I think like we can have this conversation on the way there. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, I envision, I would... yeah, I envision that's the case. So again, we have another like walk and talk with this group where the background is like the, the, slowly darkening sky the mountains and uh and the group of you are heading to meet with uh meet with ramus it seems as though the, the embers are under new management at least Bahath is saw the way that vani or whoever was inside vani put their hand on Bahath's shoulder Anytime he wanted to be himself. Well, then at least someone's keeping him in check. That's the way I look at it. Just unfortunate that that person was a friend of ours that has a different attitude. Berg, much as I love the embers and have affection for them and wish them safety, what do you think their chances are? Run alone? In the coming onslaught. They are under 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 prepared not ready. Do you think they'll be able to you think they'll be able to unite under a single flag, so to speak, if it's not theirs? Meaning join forces with the courts and whatnot. I don't know if they will. Um, My fear as well. And if they don't, they will die. Maybe later than others hide for a while. But eventually, they will die. You spent a lot of time with the dwarves, Maharib. You think they'll survive this? What's coming? Most likely not, but I think the story we tell or coercion in your world that we spin is that everyone will die. It doesn't matter what flag you're under. If you're against them, they're going to fight you and you're not going to win. The idea of unifying under a symbol or a banner is pointless. It's about life in the end. But moving Ooh, don't let Ramus hear you talking like that. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> so whether or not they live, that's up to them. And that's how I'll present the mm. argument, at least. Fair. They are stubborn. And this new attitude Attitude from Vani. Not good. Not helpful. It is in keeping Bahath controlled, though. Anything? Yes. Makes me worry less about leaving them behind while we go find Southern Wind. That is true. And, um, what do you both think 
What do you both think about the chances of people uniting under the flag of harmony? Again. You think Ramus can do it? Is that possible? I think Ramus, Ramus believes he can do it. That might be enough. But again, it, it's all symbolic. It means nothing. Ramus needs to learn that it, it doesn't matter. Symbols are powerful, Mahari. People gather behind flags. That sort of thing. I'm just wondering if his flag is one that people will gather behind. Seems to be making a convincing argument thus far. I must confess, I'm to the point where I'm very close to just saying... Forget anyone who doesn't understand the threat. Dwarves and the embers, they want to run and hide or bury themselves in the dirt and expect themselves to survive. Half a mind to say, let them try. So you're giving up already? Not there yet. I said I have half a mind. That All that right. particular that particular attitude is is very very court of coins. Like it's it's an entrenched thing. That idea of like we're just trying to help them, and if they're gonna fight back, then fuck them, right? Like we don't. Nope. Fine, we'll just go back behind our walls, and you can die to the undead. Be that way, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, you want to that's a court of coins the negotiating position. Powerful yeah. armies left, or do you just want to like scatter and die? It's up to you. I mean, I mean hey, yeah. whatever. You do yeah. you. <laughs> I, yeah, I, the court I of coins motto is basically that. our way or the highway. So, <laughs> well, when you put it that way, it makes it sound like, but you can only help some, try to help somebody so much before it's just like, I right, fuck you, dude. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so as you're, as this conversation is continuing, you, you reach sort of the end of your little hike and you come up over the, the edge of the, the little valley and you look down and as the sun is setting, you can see uh, Ramus and the three dwarves sitting around a little campfire, picking meat off of some, some little quail that they're eating. And then Maharib, you notice that there is an enormous stone figure uh, kind of like casting a shadow down into the, uh, into the scene. And there is no, there's no sign of your, of your friend. Now you're, you're still pretty distant and it's quite shadowy, but yeah, you see what looks like a big statue and there's no giant around. Bushra seems to have disappeared. She never did this. Uh, speaking out of character. No, no you never, that. you've never seen this before. <gasps> Actually, you know what? Make a, make a roll, Maharib. Make a, um, history roll. All right. It's just flat D20. A one. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have no fucking clue what's going on. Like you just. This is something terrible has happened. She's turned to stone or something. But yeah, you've you've never heard of this before. Okay, uh, it does look like her though. Yeah, I was gonna say, does uh, it kind look like kind her? of. It's like a. I mean, from this distance, it's sort of like shaped like a person. It looks like a big statue, but you can't really make up much much detail from here. I mean, I rolled a one, so the second I see that, uh, <laughs> yeah. something is wrong, and then I just fucking burst forward <laughs> like <laughs> there's rocks being... dash down there okay yeah. so Ramus you hear you hear the sounds of um someone unstealthily approaching and when you, when you turn you see Mahari jogging down towards you at a decent speed and then Berg and Ten Pillars up higher on the, the edge of the crest I mean I'm like at a full sp- hey. sprint like we're yeah yeah we're talking like 160 or something like that feet of, around Every six seconds. Yes. Yeah. Mahari runs very fast now, uh, which I guess Berg and Ten Pillars and Ramus all get to see. You just see Mahari tear off like fucking Sonic the Hedgehog, little two little trails of fire laying on the ground. <laughs> He's very fast. <laughs> yeah. He goes so fast, he disappears and goes back in time. True. So, yeah, you uh, you see this, whatever. Ramus. What are you going to do? 55 minutes. I'll, I'll just wait for him Damn. to get here. I could do anything special. Damn, you'll be slightly faster than me. 
<laughs> yeah, that's okay, Berg. You have more hit points than him now. Um, that's true. So, uh, yeah, Mahari, you, yeah, you arrive. You see Ramus getting up. R- Ramus, what? Where is everyone? But you, you lost the giant. Oh. How did you lose her? Did you the, piss her off the, trying to join Harmony? The, what happened? The giant? Was I, I thought I was supposed to protect the dwarves. Ramus. Uh, well, look over here. And like, I, I walk over to in front of the boulder on the ground. Like, you see these right here? I turn and look around. She, she ate some of these flowers. And I don't know what happened after that. You just let her eat any... T- Ramus! Yeah, she ate so, these flowers, and then... So, Ramus, Ramus, go ahead and make a deception check, but do with advantage because Maharib is already discombobulated. I one, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> zero. He said that with advantage, though. Yeah, advantage. you're lucky you had advantage because you got a zero, which is the only roll worse. <laughs> yeah, good. Fantastic. Okay. So you get a 16. Uh, so Mahari, make a uh, make an insight check. Um, I think you can just do it as as normal. Make an insight check. Uh, you want me to make an insight check? Sorry. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. going on the chat. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. 13. All right. So you have no reason to think that Ramus is lying to you. <laughs> the giant ate some poison flowers and got turned into a statue. Ramus, I, I would. What? What? Uh, fix this. What happened? I don't. Know, she, she ate some flowers. 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 She ate flowers. Why do you keep saying flowers, <laughs> Ramus? I even used thaumaturgy to make a voice louder. Flowers. <laughs> yeah, right. Like she ate some poisonous flowers, and it echoes, and then. Uh, you hear you hear this like uh, this faint this faint rumbling behind you, and uh, Mahari, when you turn, you see that the the statue, the petrified version of the of the giant, has has turned back into flesh, and she she is saying she's like in giant she's like, oh no, <laughs> uh, Mahari, no no I'm being scared, everything is okay, and she like goes in to pick you up to like give you a comforting hug, like it's okay, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm glad you're okay, Lushra. Was this was this a joke, Ramus? Yeah, we wanted to play a funny on you. Sorry. And um, Ushra nods and she says, <laughs> "I don't understand joke, but Ramus says very funny, but you not laughing, so." Sorry. It's fine. I I thought you were harmed. That's all. It was a it was a clever joke. It was very funny. And she nods and and she looks at you, kind of cocks her head, and she says, "Um, Maharib, hard on the outside, but soft inside." And then she turns and notices Berg and Ten Pillars coming down the the path, and uh. And then you just see her, her like stare intently at Berg, and the two of you walk up. <laughs> I just, I like without, I don't even make mention of it. I just look at Berg, I look at her, keep smoking my pipe. <laughs> no, shut up, then pillows. <laughs> and I will laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so I have good news. Sh- yeah, so uh, yeah, they're during this whole scene, just imagine Berg that Bushra is just like staring intently at you, like she's thinking about something. And then yeah, Ramus, please continue. I have great news, everybody. Our good friend Bushra here knows where the angry, mad dwarf is that doesn't like the giants. And uh she um Yeah, she turns at the mention of her name and she says, um, you were looking, and she's speaking giant, so anybody who speaks giant can understand her. Uh, she says, you were looking for soldier. He points to the mountains up there, hiding. Yes? That's correct, I know. Bushra. 
Yeah, Mahari, Mahari has it, and then obviously, Ramus, if you have tongues, she can understand you, and you can understand her. But who else speaks giant? Is it Berg? Do you Berg? Do you speak it? And Ten Pillars doesn't. Let me check. Real quick. We'll have to get around to teaching this big lady common. Um, so yeah, so she says she says in giant. So Mahari and Ramus can both hear, and then Ramus, you can you can explain as like she says. Um, after bad twice men started big fighting. Mm. Many soldiers came from the north on boats. Big boats, some small boats, mostly big. Many soldiers, so much fighting. Ushra hid, gusters. And then slowly, like tree growing, men begin to die, fail. Twice men, they are winning. She looks concerned at Ramus, like, yes, I understand the threat that you explained to me earlier. Look, I'm telling everyone about it. She turns back and she says, um, some men from the city, <clears throat> they live and come to mountains to hide, build in old dwarf land, like many do. And so, still there. I think Ushra captured by dwarves spent time in dwarf hole. She kind of glowers at the dwarves. So maybe they have moved, but Ushra remembers stone speaks. She pats the, the ground as if like it was a dog. <laughs> so she like pats the ground next to her. Ushra listens sometimes, hears things, remembers. Your friend here is very clever, Maharib. Yes. Uh, clever enough to play a joke on me, Ramus. I... Hmm. And she says um, to you, Maharib, she, she nods and she says, bad blood, good brain, sometimes. Hmm. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Autobiography, bad blood, good brain. <laughs> the Bushra story. <laughs> the Bushra story. Yeah. The Bushra story. Yeah, a picture of her on the front in a power suit. You meant well. I. It's. Don't think of it like that. It's. It's not. You're fine, Bushra. I'm glad that you and Ramus got along. Or get along, I should say. And. She you looks want- at she look she looks over at Berg, and then makes a face like she's decided something. Now, Berg, you don't understand what she says, but she says to Ramus, "Berg, understand, like you, Maharib, understand." No, I, we have to uh, translate to him. Uh, he does not speak your language. Our language, mine and yours, all tribe, all tribes, good yes. language. Yes, I absolutely, I forgot. Ramus can, uh, I think, cast a spell on him so that he can speak with you. Ramus, can harm money make this happen? Yes, but it isn't unlimited. Hmm. <laughs> Magic requires sacrifice. What kind? Goat? Two goats. Four. It's M- more than four. No, uh, get tired must rest. She looks around and she's like, but Bushra is not sleepy. Oh, I, I, I use me to do magic. I get tired. I must sleep to do magic again. She, she looks at you and she, and she gestures the ground. She's like, sleep. It's not- I must sleep greatly. Not shortly, greatly. She, nod. she nods and gestures again. Good. Sleep now. Bushra, you, you can't demand that someone does that. You'll be able to talk with Berg. In the coming days, I'm sure. We're going to go somewhere together. We're traveling 
companions once again. She nods. Dwarves too? If they would like to, yes. We love their company. Where? Well, we need to find someone. There's a captain, a dwarven captain that we're looking for. I don't know. Not sure where we're going to go. Southern Wind is a human. Oh, it's a yes. human. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If that's who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. Um, okay, so she she nods and she says, good, good plan. Rest now, wake up, and go. Usher will show you what she remembers. And when Ramus wakes up, harmony make for good talk, Usher and Berg. I, before bed, I could make Usher talk to Berg. And she grins. Under moonlight. Good. Good. I lean Famous, over to Berg. When. Like when they get, these guys are all talking giant. I lean over to <laughs> Berg and go. Well, no, you guys can understand what I'm saying. You just can't understand what Bur or what Ramus or Bushra is. Actually, saying. what's funny is Bushra is the only one no one can understand because tongues. Oh, that's true. I think means yeah. anything you say. It's the same ability. Yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. you the two of you have understood somehow surreally. You've understood Maharib and Ramus speaking, even though you can consciously you're like that's not common. They're speaking. It's not giant either. But no one can understand what Bushra is saying. She's just making like rumbling noises. I missed it when he cast the spell. I think he cast. I, it before I assume that Ramus. Yeah, he cast it like beforehand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It lasts like an hour. How, is, there, is it like a group thing, or is I thought it was just one person? It's one. so what it does is it affects you, and then whenever you speak, anyone can understand you, regardless of what languages they speak. Is that right, Dan? Yeah, and I can understand right. any oh, language as well. Yeah, I can understand Dan, but if Maharib and the and Bushra are speaking to each other, they're mm -hmm. speaking giant. So Maharib, yeah, Maharib has tongue of the sun and moon, which means that any creature that understands a language can understand him. Yeah. Oh, so they both have Thank tricks you. for that. Thank yeah. you. Okay, cool. Yeah, perfect. Okay, fine. Yeah, so I, well, I, I'll, I'll lean over to Berg anyway and go. I'm not sure what she's saying, but I'd look out. <laughs> yeah i think when ramus starts explaining what he just did like under moonlight i understand what's happening and i get more jovial and oh yes ramus that'd be that'd be very kind of you to do that uh bushra uh, would love to speak with berg as i'm sure you know berg very strong very strong very strong shut up <laughs> <laughs> but you you mentioned some bushra you know this human encampment with second wind what what were you saying you can show us where to go mm, and she yeah she nods and she says um mm, stones speak mountains talk wind blows through valleys carrying words Usha can listen and remember everything seen or heard. Remember. Easier in dream. Sleep first. Tomorrow, Ramus. Magic for Busha and Berg. Then we go. Stone, peak, wind, show us the way. Very well. Uh, what time of day is it? It's getting late. Like the sun's gone down. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, they have a campfire here. Is it lit? Yep. Yeah. The dwarves. Uh. The dwarves have uh, have lit a campfire. Okay. It's never lit anymore. <laughs> oh, it'll never be lit again. <laughs> <What a shame. laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. uh, okay. Great. Yeah. Then I start making my own camp or adding to the camp. All right, we'll leave tomorrow morning. Uh, Berg, they, and, and Ten Pillars to catch you up. She knows where uh, Southern Wind could be, so I guess we'll follow her. She needs to sleep first, though. Something about how her memory works. Burn. Hmm. Everybody want to settle in for, for a rest? Yeah. 
And I think we catch okay. Ramus right. up on everything that happened uh, internally. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. So at some point, because I assume you're all like taking watch and stuff, at some point in the night, 10 pillars, when you're on watch, um, Aga, the uh, older of the three dwarves, um, and uh, Warden, I think you, you notice during your watch, you notice him get up and he walks away from the camp and he like pees in the, in the mountains and he comes back and he, um, he's got a, a pipe uh, in, his, uh, in his hand and there's some, some smoke coming off the end of it and he sees you and I assume that because you're bored and on watch, you're also smoking to help pass the time. Oh yeah, no, like if he lights up a pipe, he sees my eyes light right up. Yeah, like I think I think like, you you watch his, him his, you see like, him get you know up how, groggily. Like, his brow yeah. like is always furrowed it just goes Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you see this little you you hear the the flick of uh, fire you hear that familiar like kind of roasting sound of the of the pipe weed igniting and you smell on the air this this I was about to say dank smell, but that's the wrong <laughs> kind of pipe leaf. Um, it's a very, it's a like, um, um, like a musty kind of like, um, very strong, like dark smell. And uh, you, yeah, you see him take a big, big drag off the pipe and whew, like breathe in the air. And he looks over and he sees you and gives you a look like, do you mind being interrupted? Like, can I come over and let's t- and talk to you? I, I, I present the, 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 the cedar ground next to me. Yeah, I, I think you're just sitting on a, a flat rock. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. So Aga Aga comes over, um, and uh, he he walks over to you, and Aga is um, he normally he's got quite a lot of very like curly hair, like very like sort of kinky hair, but normally he would keep it in like ritual braids to to keep them out of the way of his helmet. But since uh, he, he just kind of leaves them, so he's got this kind of like blown out like perm <laughs> and he's got a big, <laughs> big beard, big mustache and uh, lots of white in his hair and in his beard and mustache. Uh, he's the oldest of the three uh, and he um, comes over and he he walks with like a practice to like confidence. Like he's he's got a certainty about himself that you often only find with people who've had experience in life. Right. Like he's he moves with a, a certain he comes over and he kind of. <laughs> pulls his belt up and sits down and uh, and he looks over at you and he, he just says, mm, nice pipe. Yours too. Make it yourself. And he looks at it, shakes his head. Wedding gift. Mm. Right. Mine was a gift as well. <laughs> he, uh, he nods. And the two of you share a, a moment of quiet. And uh, and he says um, quietly, right? Like a um, like a low level. Like he he doesn't want anybody to wake up and hear him. So it's not quite whispering, mm-hmm. but he's he's speaking quietly. And he says, um, "Gotta ask you something." By all means. These uh, these embers, these friends of yours, they um. They live in uh, Dwarven Hall, don't they? Something tells me you already know the answer to that. I wanted to see if you'd tell me, or if you'd try and lie. I wouldn't. I wouldn't blame you. If you did. Angry dwarf trying to get back what's his. That's a force of nature you don't want to get in the way of. So. That's the place, isn't it? Whether or not it's the place, I think might be a short-sighted way of looking at it because all the places that are close to this area are going to belong to the Necromancer King soon anyway. So it doesn't matter what piece of dirt you claim. It's going to be his soon enough. You don't spend a lot of time around dwarves, do you? Telling us dirt don't matter. (laughs) But I understand. He looks over his shoulder at the two sleeping and he looks and sitting by the like laying by the fire like spooning asleep, you see uh, Erishtum and uh, Adikur, right? Adikur's got her arm wrapped around her 
uh, around Erish Tomb, and Erish Tomb's curled up in a little ball in front of the two of them are sleeping by the fire. And he looks over and he smiles and he says, um, might be that the little ones get upset if you find that out. This, uh, this fortress your friends live in has been lost a long time. That's what happens when you use magic to hide the places you live. Sometimes you lose them. To your uh, earlier point, I knew the value of land, dirt, home. I was taught very early, very hard lesson about defending something that you have sentimentality for when you know you can't win. Seen it. I've lived through it. Farmers protecting their farmland against 10, 20 men who want to take it from them. They died on that farm. Maybe you think that's worth it. I understand. He, he's that. nodding while he's nodding while you're speaking, as if uh, as if you were saying like you're telling a good, inspiring story. Like he's yep. And when you say like they died protecting it, he nods and mutters uh, in Dwarven. Uh, he mutters, uh, "Yeah, a good death, fine way to go." He says, uh, "He says to you, um, different for us though, dwarves. I mean, what's ours? It's not ours. Matters more than almost anything else." And he, he holds his pipe and he says, it's just a piece of clay, right? Just a pipe. Even with all the sentimental value in the world, still, I could get another one. I'd find a better one. He's gifted, but the pipe's mine. And if you tried to take it from me, might be I'd throttle you for it. Even though we're friends. Or maybe we could be. I don't mean you no ill will, but taking something from a dwarf. Dangerous business. But uh, the end of that times story, are changing. <clears throat> the end of that hmm. story was a farmer died protecting his land, his dirt, his home. You know what happened to that farm after he died? Nothing. It became their farm. So whether he died or not, it would have been their farm no matter what. I just have trouble seeing that that's worth dying for. Seems there's no reason for it. You and I see eye to eye on this matter. Just wanted to let you know. And I knew. I weren't keeping it from you. The little ones. Best to keep it from them. Hot tempered. Easy to get turned around. On a different subject. I don't suppose you have any of that. That pipe smoke to spare. I don't have much to trade, but. <laughs> and he, he shakes his head. He shakes his head and he says, um, Exile's life. Hard. Short. Only way you survive is with friends. You don't make your friends trade for things. And he, he reaches into his pouch and he, he takes out uh, um, like a little pat, a packet, like a little sachet of, uh, of herbs of pipe leaf and he, he hands it to you I accept this as a gift and this is not a trade but I hope you would accept a gift in return and he nods and mutters like might, might be that I could um, and I, uh, like I said, it's not much, but 
Can you read the common tongue? Some. Ugly letters. Complicated. Well, I'll say this. Never met a dwarf who doesn't like having Congress with another dwarf. You know what I mean? And he raises his <laughs> eyebrows at you. <laughs> uh-huh. This, and I take out my little smutty novel. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I, I give it to him. Mm-hmm. Careful with that. Might turn your beard blue. He, he takes it from you and he, he flips through a couple of, a couple of pages and, uh, he looks at you and he, uh, he says, uh, you know why there aren't any half dwarves? Why? Human women wouldn't survive. <laughs> and he gets up <laughs> and, uh, and he, uh, he looks back at the fire and he says, uh, I was going to go back to bed, but, um, like, looks around. Maybe I'm going to move my bedroll out over there. Yeah, I, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so he just nods and he walks away and he just, he goes over and he just picks up his, he picks up his bedroll and he just drags it out to the edge of the fire where nobody can see him. And uh, he just, yeah, sets in to start reading this new book he got. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. So the nothing, nothing happens at night. Uh, There's, you know, occasional kind of like um, false starts where you hear, you know, like a wolf howling or something. Um, But but the rest of you, you know, you take your watch and you wake up in the morning as the sun comes up. And I think, Ramus, you wake up to being gently rocked back and forth by an enormous hand. (laughs) And you hear this, you're this like, Ramus, 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 wake up, Ramus, sleep time is done. Five more minutes. Hey, she shakes her head. No, sun is up. Morning time. You had long rest. Get up. And she literally, she just scoops you up and puts you on your feet. And your your bedroll just kind of falls around you. And she she reaches over and she grabs like your cloak and just puts it on you like your little doll. And she's like, okay, let's go. You're getting ready. Priest time. Berg. Yeah, and so Berg, you're waking up uh, as well. Berg. Berg, um, our giant friend would like to talk to you for a couple minutes, okay? Berg. What? Who? The giant right behind me, Berg, that's putting my stuff on me, that, that giant. <laughs> Oh no. Um okay. All right, I just want to warn you. Okay, so I walk over to Berg. I cast tongues on you, so now you can speak with the giant and the giant can speak back to you. <laughs> hey, in this case the use of the tongues is consensual. It's true. <laughs> 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 so you you feel Ramus takes out a little clay ziggurat, waves his hand over it, chants the magic words, and then when you're done, Ramus, uh Bushra Bushra says, Berg, you understand? Yes. Hello. Good. Important things to talk. Come. She stands up. Berg, we need to leave soon, so make this quick if you get my drift. Bushra looks at you like, like shut up, Maharib. <laughs> <laughs> like, stop it. <laughs> I apologize, Bushra. I'm just saying we're waiting on he you. Is. He is right. She's like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then kind of like to you, Berg's like, come, walk. Berg reluctantly follows. <laughs> okay. So the two of you, the two of you are walking and she's, she's not saying anything yet. You know, you walk away and she's, she's walking real slow, right? She takes, she takes a step, uh, and then lets you catch up. Um, but pretty quickly realizes like, oh, you can actually keep up with her, right? Like she's big and fast, but you're small and fast. And so, 
you know, eventually you kind of fall into a pace and you're, you're walking, kind of doing this, like walk in a slow circle. You're not going anywhere, but you're walking so that she can kind of build up the, the nerve to say whatever she wants to say. And at one point when you're far enough away from the camp that she feels like no one's going to hear her, uh, she says, um, Berg, you are very strong. At first, Bushra, I'm thinking good for make babies or to fight and both. Maybe Berg make good man for Bushra. Small, but cute. Also fight. He's good. She kind of looks at you like, what do you think of that? Uh Uh-huh. But speaking with Ramus about harm money and sky and rock and magic, Bushra is realizing maybe it's better Bushra and Berg friends. Yes, I think that probably is best because there is a lot that needs doing. She she sits down, which like rumbles the ground slightly. She sits down and she looks at you and she says, Friend Berg is sad. Why? Berg. Woman mean? Berg. Friends mean? Berg hit head on small door? No. Why sad? I didn't didn't hit my head on the small door. Just a lot going on. I wish, I wish I could go hit something. Simple. Good at that. Oh, God. Yeah, and she, she grins and she nods and says, um, yes. Sometimes when Bushra angry, Bushra is fighting wall or floor or ceiling. Foes. Bushra cannot kill, but feels good. Life always leading to fight, struggle. And she, uh, she pulls up a, a sleeve of her like ratty kind of like giant tunic. And you can see that she's got all these like gnarly scars on her arms, um, on her hands, like the back of her hands have like all these deep scars. And like, they're just layered over one another. And, uh, and she, she puts her hands out and she says, Bushra, alive a long time. Sometimes not sad for reason but because life sad Berg is having sad life I think mm. Berg also been alive for a long time much pain a lot of sad but we move on Push forward. Live mm. the next fight. And that is why we must focus on what is to come. The waiting. That's the worst. So, what do we do, Bursa? You can see her like kind of thinking, thinking over it in her head while you're talking. Like she's trying to help you solve this problem. He's like kind of saying it to himself and also her, you know? Yeah. And he, he says, uh, she says, um, Ushra. Ramus is teaching word, but I cannot 
remember many big words, Ramus. Confusing sometimes. But he Bushra have bad insides. Something wrong. Even as, as small, small, Bushra is sent away. No more mama, no more papa, no family. No family for Bushra. Sent away. Bushra having to eat mountain goats all alone. Many scars. Bushra bitten, clawed, stabbed, burned, chased, hurt, but always body getting better. Bushra very hard to kill. Sometimes, she, she slows down to say this to you so you like really understand. Sometimes, inside, Bushra is wishing not to come back. No more making body better. The blood does not listen to the brain. Bushra, I'm watching family disappear. All friends go. No new friends instead. And then Maharib. And Bushra is saved. And then Bushra meets Ten Pillars and Berg and Ramus with many strange words. And suddenly, Bushra is feeling different. Having more friends again. Maybe family? Mm. Yes. I think closest thing Berg has to family is them. And maybe Bushra as well. We shall see. Things get tough, then they get worse, but they pass, and we fight on, because we have to. Ushra is many times trying to find new friend, many too scared. But some, some are being friends with Bushra. Some come on journey, eat food, go place, but then grow old, die, fall in crevasse, mauled by mountain lion, killed by soldier. All friends go. Berg understand? Berg sad this way too. <clears throat> She nods. Yeah, and she nods and she says, Not me. Bushra live. On and on. Sun up and down. Moon come and go. Seasons change. Bushra never go. Bushra very hard to kill. Berg 2, I think. Mm. Berg 2. Hard to kill. She stands up and she says, Good. Berg and Bushra, protect others. Weak, smart thinker, bad strength. Bushra and Berg will protect them. Hmm. Or like, it's a, you know, like an agreement. Kind of like motions. Yeah. Bushra she looks down at you, but as she, yeah, as she turns, as you go to, to turn, she, she looks at you and she says, um, Someday maybe, Berg find other orc. Make baby. Not with Bushra. Berg understand? Mm -hmm. Good. Will be difficult. Bushra, very pretty. But Berg must pain himself. Berg understands this. Yes, of course. It will be hard. <laughs> she gives you a little pat on the back and she's like, is okay. And she turns to, to like lead you back to the, uh, back to the camp. So meanwhile at the camp, uh, everybody is waking up and getting their bags together. Um, Aga and the other two, the other two dwarves uh, are waking up. <laughs> Ramus, you probably notice Aga and 10 pillars exchange a look where Aga nods. And like grins about something, but they don't say anything. 
Uh, and they start, yeah, they start putting out the fire and getting all their stuff together. And yeah. I look, yeah, you see, if you notice that you see uh, 10 pillars look at Aga and go like, <laughs> yeah. your beard's turning blue told you <laughs> <laughs> yeah and he just gives you a like nah get the fuck out of here <laughs> yeah so you all you'll get back together and uh when when bushra and berg return bushra announces to the group she says um wind has spoken earth spoken rocks also that way she points All right. Uh, where, where is Berg? Is are you like behind her? Or? Berg, Berg is yeah, just like I'm standing there. slightly behind her. <laughs> oh, in her shadow. Berg, nice. Nah, he's there. Uh, do we? Are we ready? Yes, I think. If you are all ready, we can go. Very well, uh, Bushra, please. Lead. Okay. So she she heads off uh into the uh into the mountains. Um so this this journey uh that she she will take you on uh is going to uh it's gonna take several days, right? Like it's clear that this isn't just a like, oh, he's just ten minutes over that way. Um and there are several points, and I think we we sort of montage this whole thing as um you know, she there's places where like she is climbing up the side of a big like cliff face, cliff face and then like lifting you up and putting you one one at a time up on a higher path. And, um, you know, you're, you're making your way through the mountains by going further up. And so we get as as we get further and further away from the jungle, the higher up we get, the colder the air becomes um, daytime. It's still warm, but at night. You know, you're finding you have to light bigger fires and, and you know, wrap yourself with with more, uh, you know, cloaks and what have you to keep you warm. And, uh, you know, you're realizing as you go that this place is dangerous, right? It's a, a hard, uh, hard place to go, but it would also be very difficult for undead to follow if you fled up into this place. Um, I think now and then the dwarves pause at some what seems to you like a random crumbled roadside marker, right? Like these things will happen every once in a while. Well, there's they'll stop at some long forgotten piece of architecture and they'll say a prayer, right? Adi Kor will lead a prayer for the the lost and the missing, right? For the the great dwarven empire that has fell. Um, but that happens every once in a while uh, as you uh, as you travel, but it doesn't really slow you down much until eventually. Um, Midway through traveling through a um, a fairly high elevation area, um, you know, there's there's almost like it's not snowing, but you can see snow on the peaks now. And it's quite like misty up here. And as you uh, as you move through through this area, suddenly Ushra stops. She turns to group and she says, Ushra cannot go and points. But you. You go. Why can you not go? Stones speak of danger for Bushra, but not for small friends. Small friends safe. Bushra is thinking maybe men with weapons, fire, dangerous to Bushra. All men right. are not. And she kind of makes a face like the, 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 you get the impression that what she's trying to say without outright saying it is that like, she's going to endanger the mission, right? Because they're going to be like, oh, fuck a giant and try to kill her. Right. So where will you go? We'll meet up with you. She, uh, she points at the ground, says. Ushra will wait here. Mm. Wait as the stones do. Very well. And looks at Ramus like. Yeah, I, I turn around and uh, she is going to wait here for us. Where she does not want to. Uh, she's afraid that the people that we're about to meet might not take kindly to her. So we'll return for her. At least we know she can hide well and be safe. Mm. Yes, Ramus, we know that. 
And she's already, I mean, she's already in the middle of, she's, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> so she, yeah, she, she, she's already doing it. Right. So she's like, she sat down and you can see the stony, like, and this time she's a different color, right? She's a lighter, she turns into a lighter stone uh, to better blend in with this, this area. Um, yeah. And then all of a sudden she's just a big statue. Very well. And you do like if it, if none of you guys are looking at ten pillars just for flavor mm -hmm. text, like you hear him like start coughing. <laughs> <laughs> and I look directly yeah. at, at um um uh Ag Aga. Aga. Yeah, yeah. Look directly. Aga, Aga gives you a look. He gives you a look like, man, I told you not to hit it so hard. What are you doing? And he kind of just shakes his head like, nah, you noob. You'll get used to it. Face turns slightly greenish. Like, ah. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> We're just getting used to that new pipe weed. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, who who's going to lead the way? Like, because basically you you're you're at the 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 sort of like a fork in the road. And it's it's not really a road. It's just the path you've been going on. but. Um, I think if you, uh, yeah, you can, you can press on, you know, which way to go. She, she just pointed like, go ahead that way and you'll find them. Uh, who is leading the way? And are you, are you approaching out in the open? Are you going to go scout ahead? How do you want to, how do you want to approach this, uh, this camp? I have no problem leading, but I think we approach out in the open. We're not trying to sneak in. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we're sneaking, right? Yeah. And these are, these are guys from the court of swords, maybe like that's what we're they like are assuming. yes i mean at least that's okay. that's what they st they started yeah okay then i will um now when it says court seal of office is that like a yeah. like a pin or a brooch i wear or is it like a piece of no paper? it's a um it's a wooden it's a wooden block that is about I don't know, like a couple of inches tall, about as wide around as like a silver dollar. It's like a cylinder. And on the okay. end, there is a metal seal, basically a metal like carving that is uh, your personal seal within the court. And you use it both to sign official documents, but also if okay. you show it, it's like a signet ring to be like, I am who I claim to be. This is my official. Yeah. Okay. My official seal. Um. If, I'm not sure if I have something like the road passes the government idea. They all seem like parchment paper stuff. So, um, if I have anything that signifies me as someone from the court of coins, just a little like anything. I don't know if I. I don't think I do have anything, but I'll just have my beyond beyond your like seal. Yeah, I was just looking I was for like. like you know, like the hand of the king thing, like one of those things. Yeah, no, that's what that's what that is, right? It contains oh, yes, okay. your name. It contains your name, your rank, and uh, like the the part of the organization you belong to. Yeah, if you show that okay. to anybody, then they they should Perfect. understand. Yeah, excellent. Then I will I will take the lead. These uh, if this is the the hold of the remainder of the court of swords and. I can at least speak somewhat of their language. So I'll take the lead if no one objects. By all means. Right. Just be on so your guard. Actually, these, men like, been, these men have been barricaded in and fighting for their lives for a while, so they might be a little edgy. Mm. So I take a second, and I uh, you see him like, I kind of like, I'm gonna say it probably like spits on his hand a little bit, like mm -hmm. adjust. <laughs> yeah, right. Try to the hair like... a little bit, twist the mustache yeah. a little bit, make sure everything is in is the, as good as I can get, like out in the open. Brush some of the dirt off, and then walks confidently forward. Okay. I'm just checking something real quick. Because of a role I made for no reason. Um, okay. All right. So, yeah, you're moving through. Like, it's it's kind of foggy up here. Not, like, deeply foggy so you can't see. But, like, it, it's obscuring a little bit. Um, and there's a fairly narrow route that leads you down towards uh, towards the camp. But before you get sight of uh, of your of your camp, of this, this camp, uh, I think probably, I think probably... Ramus or maybe 10 pillars. Let me, let me take a quick look at one more thing. 
Um, uh, okay. Um, yeah, Ten Pillars, you notice you are being followed. Um, there, there are, and it's, it's just because of your robe of eyes, right? Like no one else notices it with mundane senses, but you are being, you definitely like, there's somebody <clears throat> over there on the, on the mountain, on the, the like hillside. There is somebody behind you a certain distance. There's like at least a dozen, uh, people cl kind of closing in and you've been picking them up as you go. There are figures okay. that are, that are slowly kind of, they're, they're surrounding you basically. Uh, you can feel okay. the trap closing as you get closer to wherever it is you're going. Um, do you say anything or do you, do you let the, the, do you let the, the trap close on you? Um, do I, uh, do I notice they're human? They're. No, there's just shapes like in or? the, in the mist. They, they move like humans. They're not like slithering or like flying or anything, but okay. yeah. I, I like put my hand up to stop the group. And I what? What is it? Clear my throat. <clears throat> my name is Ten Pillars of Gold. I'm here on behalf of the Court of Coins as an official envoy and representative. I'm here to speak to Southern Wind, the Court of Swords. Make a Time charisma is saving throw. Make a charisma saving throw, real quick, because yeah. there's something they they respond after you say that. Yeah. Oh. Oh, fail. Oh. Crit fail. God. Wow. Damn. Okay. Crit fail. So all around you, everybody hears the the unmistakable sound of bowstrings being pulled tight. Or you hear the like creak of of you know maybe a dozen bowstrings around you. And then from the from the fog kind of in front of you, and it's clear now that they're they're there's some kind of magic that is helping obscure them. You hear a voice mm -hmm. uh come from the fog that says that's Captain Southern Wind to you, banker. I assume that you have a signature to prove this. Show us your I seal. Do. And I like, <clears throat> I do the, the old the old movie thing where I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like it. real slow, and I pull out the cylinder. Mm -hmm. I hold it up okay. for them to look yep. at. Okay. Uh, the voice again, uh, you hear, uh, well, you hear some like whispering, right? As they're, they're communicating, but you don't understand what they're saying. Um, and then you hear, uh, everyone put down your weapons. You're coming with us. I take out my dagger, put it on the ground, take out my crossbow. I put it on the ground and then I like open up my robes to show like that's it. Yeah. Does everybody else make a show of like disarming or does anybody resist? Berg takes takes the, the great axe and is like <laughs> literally audibly says, <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> don't don't take it. <laughs> 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 What about uh, Ramus? Do you? I mean, you don't. It's funny because Mari and Ramus are like, I am the weapon man. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what you want. Just, just, what, just me. Berg, just, <laughs> yeah, I just, I put my hands up, like, or at least yeah. put them out like that. Yeah, to show that I'm not armed. Okay. All right. So, uh, from from the mist in front of you, uh, two two figures uh, emerge. Uh, one is wearing a uh, a cloak. Uh, a thin like gray cloak and a hood and they have a mask so you can only see their eyes um they're wearing leather armor they have a bandolier of knives and a uh, quiver with some uh some arrows and they have a bow in their hand with an arrow knocked but not pulled and then next to them there is a uh, there's a man who he at one point probably had like a fairly stylish like beard and a, and a hairdo but he's kind of it's kind of gone to to shit he looks like he's been out in the wild a long time so he's got this like long scraggly beard and kind of looks more like Alan Moore than maybe he'd like to. Uh, and this guy doesn't appear, doesn't appear armed and he comes out and he looks at you uh, and he, he says, well, shit, you're not lying. Are you? You really are from the court of coins. 
And he looks, he looks at the, uh, the other three and he says, so what? These two are your bodyguards and your grandfather? Sure. And the, the, the wild-eyed man looks at you, Ramus, and says, um, you some kind of priest? Yes. Hmm. Well, you're all our guests now. Come on. And, uh, and he, he gestures like, let's go. And around you, like as you move your escort, uh, some of them pull in behind and pick up your weapons, right? You don't really see them. They kind of move in shadow. It's clear again that there's some kind of magic going on that's protecting them from being like clearly able to be seen. But they pick up your weapons and they escort you down the rest of the way. And so what we see as you as you follow this this group is that you you move down through the bank of fog that you're now pretty convinced that the fog is itself like magical that they're like generating it somehow to keep the, the little Valley they're hiding in to keep it hidden. So you pass through this barrier of fog and you come down and in this, in this little Valley, there is uh, an old, and these are a dime a dozen, but in the, the edifice of an old abandoned temple or dwarven fortress or something, you see the front of one of those. And then there are tents laid out all around it in like perfect, military precision right they're all laid out in a perfect grid you see a group of soldiers uh drilling right you see them practicing their spear work and they're all they're all like there's probably like a hundred of them down here total if you if you take this group and you guess by the number of tents so about a hundred of them um there is a banner uh that has on it it's a big saffron banner and it has a blue cloud uh, on the on the banner and it's it's flapping gently in the in the wind. You see that banner in several other places, including in front of the uh, of the temple structure. And on the front of the temple, they have. Um, I guess as you get closer to it, at first you think it's just intricate stonework, but as you get closer, you realize the front edifice of the temple is covered in skulls. There are human skulls piled up in some places 20 deep. Just this like pyramid of skulls laying against the front entrance. It's very intimidating. Uh, some of them fresh enough that they still have like bits of uh, of hair or blood still like dried on their surface. Uh, and you just see these like these massive skulls and the big cloud banner and the soldiers training. And uh, yeah. And so you, you come in and the, the guy with the, the long hair, he's walking backwards down the hill and he turns to, to see your reaction. Ten pillars. What do you, do you react or do you just have like a stone face? If he turns to see my reaction. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, yeah, he turns around to look and, yeah. and walks backward down. I don't know who does your decorating or architecture, but it's a bit more morbid than I'm used to. And he, he grins and he says, it's the way the captain likes it. Every single one, a trophy. Somebody that crossed us. Now they'll learn their lesson in the next life. Were they dead first? When you killed them again? Some. Do I notice, are they all human skulls? Or are they all kinds of, all different kinds? Ah, without close examination, it's very hard to tell like a human okay. skull from an orc skull from, and there's a lot of them. Okay. Okay. Adam, is the symbol that it was like, symbol uh, on the flag, is that like a common symbol or that people would know? Or is it like. Make a, uh, make a history check. 13. 13. Okay. Uh, you've never seen it before, but. Based on what you know about the Court of Swords and the military and how a lot of people serve and like all this stuff, you would have been steeped in that culture. Um, you don't recognize it, but it looks like a personal banner, right? Like every every high high ranking member of the military crafts a personal banner so that you know which captain you're fighting if you're fighting against them, right? So he would ride into battle with this. This is probably Southern Wind's personal banner. So all of these men have sworn fealty to that banner and to their captain. And so they ride under his his sigil.
Hmm. How long have you guys been an army without a without a king? And he looks at you, what kind of white eyes like? That's fucking news to me, man. Did we lose the king too? So you know, you know for a fact that the the knight has been both killed. This was several years ago. The knight of swords died, and the um uh, and they, they no one can find the the resurrection. Nobody can find the the reincarnation. So there's right. no knight, um, which right. is why the court of swords is a three wheeled wagon. And so you're like without a king, and he's like, did that happen? Like we we don't get a lot of news out here on the the fucking front, man. But that did happen, right? Their whole kingdom got taken over, right? No, no, no. The king, the king, the queen, and the page are still alive. They just fled. As far as you know, they fled to the northern capital. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So the actual land of the Court of Swords is taken over, but the the royalty has moved on. They're in exile. They're in exile. I mean, they're still gotcha. in their own kingdom. They're just very far north. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I can see that being out here as long as you have probably aren't up to speed on the goings on. But he nods. He's like, intelligence has been fucking sparse of late. No, that goes. Well, the king, queen, and the page of swords. They are still alive, but they're in hiding. They fled. Knight is dead, and no new knight has come to take his place. So, and he he laughs when you say that. He's just like, ha, ha, yeah, man, maybe that's what they think in the new capital. But and he looks at Ramus. He's like, you're gonna see it. You'll recognize. It's not dead, man. Not really. Dude, I'm getting some serious Dennis Hopper motherfucking Heart of Darkness <laughs> vibe. They were like, I think he was a kind man. Well, they say he's a great man. <laughs> yep. He's up there in his he's ziggurat. Like he flies by accident right now as he's talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it's all fucked, man. <laughs> So as you walk down into the camp, uh, Maharib, you're you're sort of observing the behavior of these warriors. And as they're doing their drills, the the drill like master, instead of being like third position, they all lock in and then like strike. Instead of that, he's shouting things like, who do we serve? And they're like, southern wind. How long? Forever and ever. Right. Like it's it's much more like uh, it's a weird cult of personality as much as it is a, a cadre. Right. So um, you watch this happening. You see the banner kind of like flying um, and the soldiers are coming and going and you get you get a few looks right from from some of the soldiers that are kind of at ease. But mostly they're all trained to ignore you. And um, yeah. And as you come in, uh, this this guy uh, is, yeah, is just expounding to he's like, just wait. If you are who you say you are, then I think he's going to take a real liking to you, but can't lie to him. You understand? Of course. And he, uh, yeah, he brings you down uh, into the, uh, there's an area in front of the, the steps that lead up to this dwarven, this old dwarven temple. And so there's this big, big set of stairs, skulls everywhere. And um, in front of the, uh, in front of the, the stairs, there is a stone block with um, iron rings. Uh, like embedded into it and then a chain running through the, through the rings. Um, and he looks at it and he kind of grins a little. And then he looks at the, the group of you and he says, um, my boys here, I'll take care of you. I'm going to go inside and talk to him. And if he wants to see you, he'll see you. But if he doesn't, <sighs> exciting. 
And then he runs, he runs up the stairs like jogs. He maybe even stumbles a little in his excitement and then runs up, uh, up to the stairs. No one else around here has paid any attention to you, but there are a bunch of, you now notice now that you're down in the, in the valley, you notice the people that have been following you, they're all dressed like that, that cloaked figure. They're all hidden. They have their face covered. They have their hood up. They all have bows and they have a, they have a perimeter around you, but they're giving you a little bit of space. Um, but you've been left alone at the bottom of these stairs to, I don't know, talk or plan or whatever. I, mean, I, I don't think I say anything unless prompted to. I just kind of look around my surroundings. Try to see, like, is there a way I can look at the surroundings to see how long they've been here? Like, burnt out fires? Like, um, any sort of, like, age on the on the uh, buildings they've created or the, or the whatever makeshift shacks and stuff? Yeah, so they're all tents. Um, there's no, there's no like permanent structures, but um, okay. at a glance, and this is something I think is clear to everybody. These guys have been here a long time. Um, the tents are all like patched. Um, the uh, the equipment is mismatched, right? Like a lot of them have weapons that it's clear they've stolen from someone. Um, yeah, they they have this. They have this whole kind of like very scrappy, like clutched together army group thing this battalion of of scavengers well i just look around at the group and i go they've been here a very long time and that means yes i can tell that their um willingness to come with us to help is going to be right around nil might have wasted a trip. Or oh, they're ready to leave. You're quite grim lately, Tin Pillars. Always looking realistic. Mm. I was we'll studying see. that guy's behavior. He seems fanatical, like a cult leader almost, following someone with a, like a fervent glee, doing whatever they say. I, it's. I don't know if these Jealous. men are still have their wits. A little bit. That's a little bit, but you know, fanatic isn't as great as someone that follows you willingly with this set mind. Well, we'll see what they have to say. In the skull business, what is this all about? This is not normal behavior <laughs> for an army. Sure it is. <laughs> it's scary. It keeps people away. That's for like barbarians, not military. They it's live not the core of swords, I know. In a war yeah, it's where there's undead. I know, I'm just saying this behavior isn't the core of swords army that we would expect. So, something is off. And I know they've been out here a long time. We'll see what they have to say. Or him, I suppose. Yeah, and so you you wait, and, you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes go by, then an hour, you know, your legs start to cramp up, maybe you, s you sit down. The dwarves, you can see them getting, like, more and more nervous, uh, and then an hour turns into two. Is it within their nature to make us wait this long? <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, and the, the, the day just sort of like winds on. Do you how long do you wait before you have, do something or do you just you just wait? We don't have a guard or anything, right? Yeah, you're surrounded by bow dudes. Oh, oh they stay here the whole time. They're just like the whole yeah, time. Yeah, you're they're, just, they're watching okay. yeah, they're watching you. Yeah, I mean they're not obviously <laughs> Jesus. I can't even imagine. It's really hard to pull a bow so you can shoot the arrow, let alone hold on to it for any amount of time. So no, they're they're on guard, but they're they're just standing around watching. Like making sure you don't well, try to run see, or cause trouble or whatever. Yeah. You'll 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 see like ten pillars like dig out his pipe, like tap it, puts his pipe away, stands up. Well, fuck this. And he gets up and he starts just walking towards wherever he thinks the fucking southern wind might be. 
Yeah, two of yeah. two of the the bow wielders. Then uh, they they lift their bow and point it at you. They don't say anything, but they get in your way so that now you're facing. You're looking at the stairs, but they're pointing their their bows at you. They don't say anything, but they give you a stern. You get two very stern looks from the the thin mm-hmm. area between the hood and the mask. I, I look at both of them. My boots are older than you. Shoot me. And I keep walking. Yeah. So before, so you, you say that and then you hear a voice from up, from up top. Uh, you hear the, the Lieutenant say, he's like, Whoa, 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 Whoa. Let's not be hasty. There's no need for that. And he's walking down the stairs and he says, um, sorry to break it to you. 10 pillars, but he's not exactly in the mood today. What's going on up there? So I guess we need to find you a tent. You got some extras. That's all I ask. And he, he, he gestures and he says, uh, all of you are now guests of his most holy gloriousness, <sighs> Captain Southern Wind. And he turns and he salutes the temple. And he says, uh, he'll be ready to see you, but hard to say when. I want to do an inside check on this guy to see if, like, yeah. I'm thinking that, like, maybe Southern Wind is, like, a skeleton in a suit of armor just kind of, like, propped up on a fucking <laughs> chair or something. <laughs> hey, hey an chill out, man. He'll see you when he's ready. <laughs> or, like, yeah, like, the uh, fucking, oh, God, the, the last dragon was like, just stay here. The master will see you soon. <laughs> and the master's like a fortune cookie machine. Yeah. <laughs> uh 32. <laughs> nice. uh, 32. Okay. Um so what did you like this guy he's he's a squirrely weirdo but he's not lying to you. Um everything yeah. he's saying he believes and he's like just kind of excited. He's like look at some new strangers are are around. His guards yeah. are like we don't know or trust these people but he's like new friends. Maybe you're going to save us. Maybe if you're actually here from the court of coins, you know. Yeah. So I think that over over the next like little bit, over the next hour, they find you a tent. Sparse, right? It's got uh cots to, you know, to sleep on. Um and uh and says, you know, you can you can store your stuff. There's a footlocker there. Nobody's using this tent right now. It's all yours, man. So get comfortable. There's only a few rules around here, okay? So first rule, you don't go in the temple. All right. Don't do it. You go in there. All bets are off. I don't care how rich you are, who you represent. Don't go in the temple, right? Second rule. Two meals a day. One at sunrise. One at sunset. You miss one? Too bad for you. You're our guests. You eat at our table with us. Third thing. Don't go talking to the soldiers, okay? You stay away from them. You need anything? Come find me. I'm always around. How do we ask for you? And he, he's like, oh, ah, shit, I, I didn't introduce myself. Most people around here, they call me the lieutenant on account of my being the lieutenant. But the name I was born with, that doesn't matter anymore. You can call me most loyal sword. Lieutenant's fine. And he, he looks at the group of you and he's like, I'm going to let you rest. Long walk from the Court of Coins. And he turns around. He walks out. And so the group of you are now alone in this, in this tent. And the dwarves all look at each other like, humans are weird. Yeah. They look very nervous. As he walks a decent ways. It's just, <clears throat> so, how are we getting in the temple? <laughs> just <very> <laughs> <laughs> Does the, uh, the camp have like campfires lit? Or is it all dark? Um, there would be probably fires like they, they would light they'd light fires around the perimeter. Um, and then there would be probably small bonfires in a few places where the soldiers would sit and eat and keep warm. Yeah. OK. I think we should make a fire. It's fucking cold. Well, sure. Yes. Uh, we need firewood or something to burn. How are we getting in the temple? We're not setting up camp here. We don't have time. We 
Dump. It's not time. It's, it's obviously a power play. Did anyone else get the feeling that maybe there is no southern wind? Maybe this lieutenant character is in charge and he just goes to talk to southern wind and no one else can. He brings maybe. his orders back from southern wind. Maybe like. southern wind is a squirrel. <laughs> I like how Berg just wants to get in on the conspiracy <laughs> talk. So you're just like, what if he's a squirrel? Huh? <laughs> oh, I love it. I, I, it's weird. I know they've been here a long time, but something off. I look to the dwarves and, uh, tell them see the looks on your faces and they are warranted humans and dwarves our customs are not very understood by the other but this even for humans is very strange so and Aga Aga shakes his head and he he says um, everything you people do is strange the road of human madness is broad and long I'm going to stay in the tent if you don't mind. He sits down. It's it's the curse of having such a short life in comparison to yours. I have an idea of how we can get in the temple. Great. But we need a bonfire. We can't talk to the soldiers, but he didn't say anything about them talking to us. Are you going to make a fire big enough to attract attention? No, it's the fire is just a welcoming fire. We're not killing them, Remus. No, I'm not killing anybody. <laughs> Do you want to make a deception? Was anyone or? else? <laughs> I just look around and go, no, sure. <laughs> was anyone else waiting for the yet? <laughs> right. It's like Berg promising not to smash something. Nobody believes that. <laughs> Sudden <laughs> flashback to Remus incinerating a crowd of peasants with his mind. So. Yeah, hard to trust that statement, Ramus. Right, and call him out just standing there going, <laughs> What did you do? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yep. Adam, to describe the layout of this place, are we in the center of like a bunch of different uh, tents? Are we on the edge of a mountain? Where's the, the temple in yeah, so relationship to us? Yeah, let me give you let me give you a patented shitty Adam Goble drawing. Great, I'm excited. Uh, okay, how can I draw? I need to draw a mountain valley that doesn't just look like a sideways vagina. So <laughs> there's mountains. Watch, there's mountains that go over here on this side, and then there's mountains that go over on this side. Sure. And then the the temple. So the temple is set into the side of the mountain, and then there are tents laid out. In a grid pattern. The temple on higher elevation? Better than um not not really. Like if you if you look at it, there are stairs, right? There's a staircase that leads up to the temple. And then they have all these tents laid out, this little tent city. Uh and so I think probably you are and also these are way not to scale, but you guys are probably in one of the tents, like out at the edge. Now is the is the temple built into the side of the mountain like Indiana Jones and Last Crusade, like it's carved out of the mountain, yeah. or it's yeah, yeah like, that's how that's how dwarves, okay. yeah, that's how dwarves build. They they build oh, so directly thing, out right? of yeah, pretty much. If you're in the mountains and there are weird ruins, chances are pretty good. But I'm not going to make you make a history check for this. But um, this temple was built later, uh, after you don't know the dwarven word for it, but this was built after dwarves encountered human religion and adopted it. So this is technically a dwarven temple, but it's to the arcana, or it was. It, sure. It doesn't have any religious, it doesn't have any religious like symbology on the outside of it, but they keep calling it the temple. Um, it's a mid, it's like a mid, um, I don't even know how to call it, mid-era dwarven temple. Sure. After they interacted with humans, but before they all receded into wherever the fuck they went, the core of the earth. Uh, can we see if there's guards uh, at the temple entrance? Or is there, and also, is there multiple entrances into said temple? Can we see that from where we're at? Or is it too cloudy? Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, if you look around before you you get a look around before night falls fully, right? So you want to have a look in the in the daytime. So um, there only appears to be at a glance the one entrance. If you search the surrounding vicinity, there might be a secret way in or out, but you've only seen the one entrance. Um, there's no one guarding it, right? Nobody's standing guard with weapons or anything. Everybody's just kind of ignoring that it's there. Um, and then uh, your tent is being guarded, not by standing guards, but if you peer and you look around outside, more of the like ninja cadre, those those guys that snuck up on you, they're like just suspiciously around keeping an eye on you. Uh, does you our have an tent, escort. Does our t- is our tent uh, fully enclosed or does it have like an opening at the top? Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's a big canvas tent that's been patched many times and it's large enough that it has on either side. Um, it's like five, five cots, like closely put together. So it's quite a big tent, yeah, like a small house. It's probably actually bigger than the house I live in right now. So you've got lots of room. Uh, and last question, how far are we from the temple? What'd you say? Um, I don't know. Not that far, like within a couple hundred feet. Cause you're, you're kind of out at the edge here. You were led past it to get there. So, okay. Ravis, what is the plan? You want to start a bonfire, get their attention? Just a campfire, and I would like to sing a song. So, Ramus, when you when you say that, right? When you're like, I just I have a plan. I just need to do this thing. You're struck. Everybody else hears a gong. Right? Everyone hears the sound of a brass gong ringing. Right? But for Ramus, you know when you hear a song you haven't heard since like you're a teenager or a kid, and you're like. Oh yeah, and it just like draws you back to that that thing. This is the sound of a sacred temple gong being rung to call people in for a prayer. Um, so somewhere outside, you hear this like, and uh, and immediately you know contextually you've heard this not this exact gong, but it's like yeah, it's like a school bell. Like it's, you're just like oh, time to pray. Um, some some memory part of you does that. So you hear that. And then you can hear outside your tent shuffling as uh, some of the soldiers are like getting up. You can hear armor rattling. You can't see any of it because you're in a tent. But yeah. What, what was that? Is it dinner? Prayer time. I just blurt without even thinking. Yeah. Prayer time? What? They still practice up here and all of this? Oh, um. I forgot you didn't grow up in the Court of Swords. It's, there's certain day, times of the day that we pray. The sun is going down, so we pray to the sun to come again in the next day. And depending on what arcana you believe in the most or strongest connection with, but the sun is the most prominent in most of these areas. And if you don't pray, the sun doesn't come up. Ooh. We all just kind the of is, turned to Berg and like, oh, that's really good. Love the nickel Berg. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, prayer. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So maybe then as you, as you say that the, the camera kind of pulls back, we, we leave the tent and we see the soldiers uh, all walking towards uh, this sort of open area that you came in. And we can see that waiting for them, there is a, there's like a literal chariot. Uh, it's being pulled by two soldiers, right? They they pull it up, and it's a big bronze uh, like battle chariot. It's clearly been used many times. Uh, you can see uh, that there is like dents and scratches and stains uh, in it, and on its back you see a priest. Uh, he's wearing the long priestly robes. He has his head shaved. Um, he has a uh, he has a, a beard, um, and. He has on him a um, he's wearing a, a breastplate and on the on the chest of the of the breastplate is uh, the symbol of the chariot. Uh, so we see that on the plate and he he has his arms wide as the soldiers all come in to line up uh, and he begins to lead them in a prayer for victory. Uh, and I think that that chanting sound that like and it's 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 like a call and response. It has a lot more. It sounds a lot more like um, what Marines do when they march. You know, it's that this is my rifle, this is my gun, but it's in a religious form. So the prayer is like, may the chariot grant uh, sharpness to our steel, may the chariot grant weakness to our enemies. And they're all chanting along with them uh, as this ritual happens, as the sun is setting. And I think that's probably that's probably the last scene. 
and is this this little religious gathering now that you've found Southern Wind, and then it and then it fades. All right. Yeah. Well, I've got a plan, but we'll have to have. Can't wait to fight this guy. (laughs) (laughs) It does not, funny enough, involve fighting. Uh, But maybe we'll discuss in the post show. Mahari Mahari walks the way of peace now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. Let's do some shout outs, though, and then we'll go do that post show. Zeke, start us off, sir, with some shout outs. You betcha. What's up, everybody? Thank you guys for watching. Every week, my name is Ezekiel the Third. You can find me at or slash Ezekiel underscore III on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, I will be on Drop Frames tomorrow. And then after that, uh, Thursday noon, we're back to Persona 4 Golden, baby. Um, so if you want to catch all the weebness, you know where to find me. Uh, thank you to Dan, Max, uh, JP, and Adam for making this the highlight of my week every week. I love you all, and I wish you... Uh, wish us a good, fucking good journey to come because it's looking pretty grim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think it's fine. <laughs> uh, uh, Max, do some shoutouts for us. I'm Gazzy Max. Can you can find me on the things? What if I just did that? What if that was the shout out? We've had <laughs> shout outs like that. People that, that are just not used to it, you know. I'm Gazzy Max. Can uh, you can follow me on the stuff if you want to. Um, thanks for watching today's episode. And yeah, I'm in agreement with Zeke. Um, fuck, man. You think we'll be here for like 10 episodes? <laughs> I, don't, nah. I don't think we'll be here quite that long. Nah. But maybe. Nah. You never know. Uh, I'm interested, though, to see what the fuck's going on with Southern Wind and the whole camp thing. Something's fucked up here. More than just... Maybe it's just, they're just here for a while. We'll find out. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to be streaming some, some COD after this. Uh, checking out Warzone, but probably a little bit later than normal, so... Follow Twitter and all that stuff, and you'll you'll have uh, info on that. And we'll see you next time. Cool. Thanks for watching. Dan, do some shout-outs for us real quick. Hi, guys. I'm Dan's Gaming, a variety streamer on Twitch. I am currently playing through Ori, uh, the, the sequel to Ori 2, I, uh, Will the Wisp. Um, I'm playing through that tomorrow. The game's been really good so far. And then on Friday, I'll be playing Neo 2, which should look super fun as well. They're both getting really good reviews. So tune in if you want to check that out. Another super fun episode. I had a lot of fun today. Um, I liked role playing with that giant. That was a ton of fun. <laughs> and I cannot wait to do more stuff next week. Thanks for having me on the show. Awesome stuff. Uh, Adam, do some shout outs and we'll do some goals. That's me. And I would love to. Um, my name is Adam Coble. I am the dungeon master of this show, uh, which you can watch here or at twitch.tv slash Elspeth, I guess. Um, so <laughs> thanks for coming, everybody. If you are curious about the episode or want to learn more about the, the world or just ask questions about what's going on, uh, you can do that over at community.mejp.com. I'll put together a Q and a for you. I'll post the link in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, otherwise you can find me on Twitter at skinny ghost or twitch.tv slash Adam Coble, uh, where I talk about role-playing games and play role-playing games. It's pretty much all I do these days. So go on over there and check it out. Cool, cool. Let's give these nerds some experience. Yeah, let's do the let's do the XP thing. So for yeah. goals today, I think some of you actually resolved uh, some of these. So Ramus, yeah. uh, Ramus, you found Southern Wind's trail, right? Found your way to Southern Wind, and you worked on keeping the dwarves safe. They are still safe. So you got <laughs> one one worked on, and your resolved one is worth. Let me get my calculator. Let's see here. Yeah, you're 16. Okay. Uh, 3,200. Another 3,200 for you. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have another goal you want to replace that one with? Actually, you know what? I'll come back around. You, you need, you need okay. one more goal. Um, Berg, you worked on replacing the hammer with something significant. Uh, you located Southern Wind. And uh, I think just those two. Because we'll get to evacuating the cultists. So... Uh, same same experience. Thirty two hundred for completing the one and uh, working on replacing the hammer fifty times your level. Uh, Ten pillars. Let me just adjust my numbers here. There we go. Okay. Um, so you found the Court of Swords cadre, which, as we now know, is worth thirty two hundred experience. Um, is that level based? Worked... I'm, I'm lower. One lower level. Oh, that's now. right. Yeah, yeah. It's a little lower for you. So that is. It's not too much less. Let me check. 2800 yeah so it's 2800 plus you worked on you worked on your um 
talking. You tried to talk to Agni, but you got you got blocked. Yep. Um, but you, you worked on it and convincing the embers to take action. So you worked on two and then got 2,800 for your completed goal. Uh, and then, um, Maharib, um, I think you worked on helping Berg find a weapon and you located Southern wind. So for you, 3,200 plus 50 times your level. Gotcha. And everybody, I need, I need one new goal from everybody. Uh, do people already know what they want to replace their goals with or do you want to wait? Until yeah. I'm ready. You know yours? Okay. Uh, do you want to do it yours? I'm going to replace all three of them. It, my goals Hell will be yeah. get into the temple peacefully, get the soldiers to talk to us, and convince mm-hmm. other wind to help us. Hell yeah, that's some focused goals. All right. Get southern wind to help us. Excellent. I have placed all of your eggs in this basket. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Berg, do you, uh, Max, do you know what you want your goals to be for Berg? Just because he knows what his goals are doesn't mean anything's changed in this realm. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> okay, all right, you can think about it. Uh, ten pillars. Do you know what you want your your goals to be? Um, tell uh, tell me if this needs work, but I wanted uh, to discover how the quarters or the um, yeah the quarter swords Godre has survived this long. Yeah. Is that- yeah. Yeah. Okay. Find out how the cadre has survived this long. Yeah, that's a good goal. I like that. Okay. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, uh, and then uh, you you want to replace any of your existing ones? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll give me a minute. I'll, or give me. Yeah, yeah okay. Here. I'll have them done. Okay. Yeah, think on that. Uh, and then uh, JP, what do you what do you want your goals to be for my? Uh, I'm gonna shelf help Ramus to not make the same mistakes mm-hmm. for now, and also shelf uh, help Berg. So we're gonna put uh, gain entry into the temple. Not sure if peacefully okay. is part of my plan, but uh. <laughs> yeah, the more constraints, the more constraints you put on it, the more difficult the goal is. So, like, if you get into the temple peacefully, you'll both get experience, but Dan will get more because it was harder to do. Well, then I'll go with gain entry into the temple without being noticed. Hmm. Okay. I'll make it harder. Stealthily. I like it. Okay. Uh, convince the cutter to join us with the help of my party. So it's not necessarily okay. it's basically. Hey, ten pillars make a. a Persuasion roll for us. Uh, yeah, like help <laughs> 10 pillars to make yeah. that persuasion roll. Put up a good front. Yeah, assist, right? Rather than just watch. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then what do you want for your third one? Um, I guess, kind of, I mean, it seems a little bit up in the air. So I guess I'm going to put like, uh, confirm that second wind isn't. Southern wind? Southern wind. Yeah, sorry. Confirm Southern Wind is a lot. I love it. But it's an ability. I am that Captain I used to use. Second Wind, and this is my cousin, Commander Saving Throw. It's an ability that and I used to have. I know. It's, yeah, it's fine. Um, so like Bardic con- Inspiration. We're all, confirm we're he's all alive. Negan. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, confirm he's alive or confirm that he's a real person. I guess yeah, confirm I, that I he's mean, alive. maybe how about, how about learn the truth about Southern Wind? Let's go with that. Okay. Yeah, because it does seem. I mean, you're you're picking up what I'm putting down that this place is supposed to be uneasy and strange. So yeah. something's going on. Okay, cool, cool. Sounds good. I can work with that. Cool, Thanks, guys. All right, that's it. I think we're all back next Tuesday. So we'll see you then for some more Court of Swords. We're out. Have a great Easter night. Bye-bye. Bye bye, everybody. Bye.